Welcome to the E Academy. In today's episode, I will tell you how the thermostat type output works and how to configure it. But first, let me say that outputs of this type are available only in the Integra Plus series control panels. In the previous episode, I presented control of outputs using temperature detectors. However, as we know from episode 73, other wireless devices of the ABAX2 system are also equipped with temperature sensors. So how can we use the temperature information sent to the controller by each of the devices mentioned above to control the outputs, e.g. heating? The thermostat output, the special type of output mentioned in the introduction, is designed for this purpose. During the presentation, I will use the same set of devices that I used in the previous two episodes. So let's go to the DLoadX program. The control panel is already connected to the computer and has service mode turned on. I choose output number 5 and set the type number 120. Next to this output, we can indicate from which zone the temperature value is to be taken. As an example, I will specifically choose a zone where there is another device than temperature detector assigned. Let it be zone 18, which in our case is a APMD250 dual motion detector. Below there are two fields described as temperature T1 and temperature T2. Two threshold temperatures are set in them. The important thing is that only one threshold can be active at a time, temperature T1 or temperature T2. And which one? This depends on the state of the output forcing T1 or the timers indicated below. Temperature T1 is used to set the first temperature threshold. This threshold will be taken into account during control when all the controlling timers indicated in the settings are off or when the output forcing T1 is on. In turn, temperature T2 threshold will be active when the controlling timer is on and the triggering output is off. If the temperature falls below the currently active threshold, our thermostat output will be activated. How can this be used? We assume that we want to have a higher temperature, e.g. 22 degrees Celsius, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the room monitored by the detector. At night, i.e. from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., on the other hand, we want a lower temperature. Let's say it should be about 18 degrees Celsius. In the temperature T1 field, the lower temperature, i.e. 18 degrees Celsius, is set. In temperature T2 field, we set 22 degrees. We move on to the timer settings. At timer number 1 in the Everyday column, we enter the time at which the timer will switch on and off. During the period when the first timer is active, i.e. during the day, the heating will be controlled using the temperature T2 threshold, while at night, when the timer is active, the temperature T1 threshold will be used. The forcing output may be used, e.g. if you want to maintain a lower temperature when there is no one at home and the system is armed. So we can indicate output number 6 as the output triggering temperature T1. When we set the output type number 21, armed status, we can also select the output type number 22, full armed status. At the output of the thermostat type, there is one more field marked as hysteresis. This is the temperature difference between switching the output on and off. It works similar to the tolerance I talked about in the previous episode when configuring the temperature detector. Specifically, the idea is that the output will be turned on when the temperature falls below the threshold by a value greater than the hysteresis. So, for example, if we set a value of 22 degrees Celsius and a hysteresis of 2 degrees, the output will be turned on when a temperature lower than 20 degrees is measured, which is already at 19.5 degrees. The output will be switched off when the temperature rises above the set threshold, i.e. 22 degrees Celsius. The hysteresis serves to eliminate undesired changes in the status of the output in the case of slight temperature fluctuations. If the value zero is left in the hysteresis field, the output will be activated when the temperature falls by half a degree below the preset threshold. I write the data to the control panel. Now let's check how it works. The APMD250 detector has been brought to a cooler place. We can see on the keypad how the indications change. The temperature around the APMD250 detector is dropping. Let me remind you again what the assumptions are. 
During the day, when the temperature is not armed, the temperature T2 threshold is valid, which has been set to 22 degrees. The hysteresis is 2 degrees, so output number 5 will be activated when the temperature drops below 20 degrees. OK, the output was switched on when the temperature fell below the threshold. We continue to observe the temperature indications. In the meantime, the detector has been moved back to a warmer location. The temperature in the environment of the APMD250 detector increases. When the temperature T2 threshold of 22 degrees Celsius is exceeded, the output should be turned off. OK, the LED at output number 5 has gone out. Now I'm going to check whether the temperature T1 threshold is valid for thermostat control when the system is armed, i.e. when the forcing output is active. Arming the system. The detector was again moved to a cooler place. We can see that the output number 6, indicated as the trigger output, is active. Temperature T1 is 18 degrees and the hysteresis is set to 2 degrees. Output number 5 should turn on when the temperature falls below 16 degrees Celsius. OK, output number 5 has gone into active state. The temperature around the detector starts to rise. When the temperature exceeds 18 degrees, which is the lower of the program temperature's thresholds, the output is turned off. We already know how the thermostat type output works, but is it possible for the system users, other than the service staff, to change the thermostat settings, e.g. from the keypad? Well, there is such an option, and we will show you how to do it. I go to the terminal. Enter the password of the user who is authorized to program the system options. I confirm with an asterisk. I move to the Change Options and then to Temperatures. I select the output programmed as a thermostat. Now I can move to the settings of the selected threshold, Temperature 1 or Temperature 2. Here you can also change the value of hysteresis. There is another quicker way to change the settings of the thermostat type output. It is available when using the INT TSI keypad. Specifically, the thermostat type button is used for this purpose. As you can see, all you need to do is touch the icon on the screen and authorize yourself. Just like a moment ago, the user entering the password must have access to program the system options. For example, I will increase the T2 temperature to 25 degrees Celsius. Confirm. I go to Deload X to check if the configuration of output number 5 has changed. I read the data from the control panel. According to the message, the output data has been changed. I check, yes, it is changed. Instead of the previously set 22 degrees, the number 25 appears in the temperature T2 field. OK, but how do I configure the thermostat type button? It's pretty simple. In TSI Builder, in our keypad design, I place the thermostat button on the selected tab. Right mouse button, Properties. I enter the name. Now the most important thing, I need to indicate the number of the output, which is configured as type number 120, thermostat. So I choose output number 5, I confirm. As an example, I enter the descriptions of the two threshold temperatures. Finally, I can add a selected icon to the button. That's all. The thermostat button has been configured. I would like to remind you that information on the creation of a design for the INT TSI keypad, adding tabs and synchronizing the SD card is shown in the tutorials which you can access from the TSI Builder welcome screen. OK, that's all in today's episode. Thank you and feel invited to another meeting in eAcademy. See you soon.